So, good evening guys, I'm Jonas. So, at the very beginning of my talk, I'd like to introduce my hometown, Doshan, first. So, as you can see, surrounded by China's East Sea, my hometown, Doshan, is an archipelago with a temperate maritime climate. The temperature state hardly reached over 35 degrees Celsius. And like many cities around the world, most residents saw that climate change is something happening far away. So there's nothing to worry about. Until this summer, the asphalt sizzled under the hot sun, and the temperatures reached over 40,000 degrees Celsius, breaking the highest local temperature record in history. We finally realized that global warming is no longer a loss, but an inevitable catastrophe that we encounter. When talking about abnormal climate in the Earth, I guess the first thing coming to your mind is probably global warming. However, I'd say, as the citizens in my hometown, most people actually did not have a clear perception of what an Earth is until they were faced with the deadly heat waves this summer, which is the first direct consequence of global warming. So unlike other abnormal weather phenomena, for example, tropical cyclones, dust storms, or cold waves, which usually sweep over the whole city, heat destroys quite speed. We overlook extreme heat because it does come the drama of ropes and flying in the sky and splitting into rivers, but it does make our life harder because these are obviously not the temperatures our bodies can adapt to. And these are not the temperatures our cities and infrastructures are made for. So, in fact, the extreme heat has lasted for 40 days in China, covering over 500 million square kilometers of land, and affecting more than 900 million people. And in particular, this summer, the number of thermal pollution patients reached a new high, which is a severe disease caused by exposed to extremely high temperatures and low wind speed. So if people get thermal pollution, their ability of regulating body temperature will be out of control, leading to a series of uncomfortable reactions, for example, dizziness, vertigo, or even some shock. However, I'd say, what we are now experiencing might be a portent of the things to come. Now we are encountering extreme heat, but what will happen in the next few years? A recent climate study gives us the answers. So, the global average temperature has been raised 1.1 degrees Celsius above the value of the pre-industrial era. It might not sound so bad, but actually, it raised the year of the forest by up to 600% per year, liberating millions of tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere creating a vicious cycle of abnormal climate on the Earth. At the same time, because of the accelerated thermal expansion of seawater and the melting of ice glaciers and continental ice sheets, the global average sea level has been raised 8 centimeters within the last 25 years, which means in the worst case, the sea level will rise by 2 meters by the end of the century, which will be likely to completely submerge China's great metropolis, Shanghai. That's what we are now. These facts and figures are absolutely stunning and frightening. But the ultimate question is, being faced with such catastrophe, do we really have some effective solutions to tackle global warming? Or can we have some solutions to make our cities better adapted to this extreme environment. So, after consulting with some experts in the field, I tried to come to a conclusion. Why don't we try to make our city naturally cooler? So just imagine if we can stay comfortably against extreme heat without turning the AC, the carbon dioxide emission will be greatly reduced. So from the paper explaining the relationship between the wall structure and the natural cooling effect with the building, I got a conclusion. Why can't we try to utilize the natural process of ventilation 
这么美。The temperature naturally cooler. So, for example, we can say one. I try to design a graph indicating the double hole structure. As you can see, the two walls, the two holes in the wall, actually help the air move automatically from the bottom to the top of the surface, taking out heat efficiently. Furthermore, there are some new materials covered on the surface of the concrete, which can greatly reduce the heat absorption of direct sunlight and reflected infrared radiation from the ground surface. But I'd say, though these methods are very novel and may help the city better adapt to extreme temperatures, their technological maturation and worldwide popularization still have a long way to go. So, overall, Global warming is a very complex but vital problem that all human races should tackle, and extreme heat this year is serving as one of its portents. The right perception of global warming will help more people join in this long-lasting campaign, and we always dream of getting our offspring a more fertile and beautiful planet. And this requires the combined efforts of all humanity. So that's all for my talk. Thank you for listening.